On this episode, we talk about vlogging versus blogging, Snapchat versus Periscope, and how to grow and sustain an awesome YouTube community. Charlie asks, with YouTube being the number two search engine, I've been thinking vlogging is accessor to blogging. What do you think? Awesome question, Charlie. I love it. You can probably tell already where my head's at when it comes to video written versus content. There are some unfortunate things we need to keep in mind just with search engines in general, and that is that search engines cannot necessarily crawl video very well. They're still working on that, still making that better. So written text and written content is easier to crawl for the search engine. Now, there's some workarounds with that. So one of the things we do here at Huify is we take all the videos, this one included, and we get it transcribed. So we send it off, we get everything that I say written down on words, and then we take all those words and we upload it as a blog post and as a transcription when we're putting it on YouTube or some of the other places. So that's some of the little technicalities with it. To answer your question, I think that video is gonna to continue to dominate when it comes to content. I do think vlogging is gonna become more of a norm as people learn how to use the equipment they have. You know, with having an iPhone in your pocket, this right now shoots 4K, which means the benefits in that and using that as a vlogging camera are significantly better than it was in the past. We have all the technology now in our pockets, we just need to know how to use it and get over that hump of putting ourselves out there and recording more. Katie Boyle in response to an Ask Joss Harkis episode about Snapchat. Snapchat, what about Periscope TV? So the question is basically, if I'm understanding it correctly, we have Snapchat over here, what about some of these other apps like Periscope or like Meerkat? You could almost throw Blab in there too, although that's a little bit different. Some of you may have not even heard of that yet. The difference is you wanna go where the attention is. Not necessarily where the attention will be. You can definitely be a pioneer in the social space if you want to. If you're looking for more of a quicker return, more of a quicker ROI, go where the attention already is and you won't have to spend as much time or energy or work building into a platform that may never come to be something that a lot of people use. So with Meerkat or Periscope, those are great for bringing in audiences live. Snapchat is instant content that is quickly digestible. Usually you can't put something over 10 seconds. With something like Periscope, because it's live, because it's indexed, and because you can reference it later, versus something on Snapchat that if it's sent to you directly, you may not be able to reference it later unless it was in that person's story. So again, because the content expires in Snapchat, there is this weird hybrid, it is live, kind of like Periscope, but it's something that's there and gone very quickly, and therefore its value increases versus something as Periscope, where it's live and continuous and then stays posted for a period of time afterward, it's less valuable because you can't get the snippets that really matter. You can't like get the nugget digest version of a Periscope, even though if they did that, or a Meerkat, even though if they did kind of like a highlight reel, I think that'd be really valuable and an awesome play. JT Machinima asks, I want to build a killer community in the YouTube gaming space. What best practices can I start to implement? Cool. So for those who do not know, JT Machinima already has an enormous community, so I'm stoked that they submitted this question. They have around 300, John, what's the audience up to right now? They have 330, 330,000 followers on YouTube. I do not have anywhere near that, so JT, thanks for the question and taking the time and submitting it. So some of the thoughts on curating a community and growing it. The biggest thing is show that you have, there is something of value to them whether it is secret inside knowledge, whether it is a pooled source of information or knowledge within a group that others don't have access to, or it's a common interest that is more of like a passion that, that people absolutely love. Whatever that is, tap into that, focus on that one thing. JT, you guys have done a great job with video games. You show that people love video games and they love video game rap videos. In fact, I don't know where we can put that, um, but if you wanted to show kind of a quick, like while I'm talking, just John, just put some kind of video overlay right here so you can show some of the, 
um, videos and maybe play a little bit of a soundtrack. Back to your question, if you want to drive a community, figure out how you can bring that community to a place where they can talk to each other so they can add benefit to each other, so they can collaborate with each other and say, hey, isn't JT Machinima awesome? And then talk within each other about how awesome JT Machinima is. That also means that JT Machinima, it's hard to say that over and over that time fast, JT we'll just say, that way JT doesn't have to go in and say, hey guys, look how awesome we are all the time because their community will do that for them but also continue to build into them. You guys have done an amazing job. I've seen some of the ways that you've done sneak peeks for some of your private groups, or you've let them know uh, some behind the scenes footage, um, like for something like this. If we had done something here, and I'm gonna do it right now even. I'm gonna put on my Snapchat. We are filming right now the next Ask Josh Harkis. If you wanna submit a question, go ahead. So something like this gives people a behind the scenes footage. I'm gonna post it, posted it. Something like this gives people a behind the scenes footage on what's going on, gives them an, a bigger picture of what you do. And it's not just the edited version that you see right here. So when you're making things and you're a YouTube creator, give people that snapshot, give people what your studio looks like, give them that, that, that image because then it makes them feel more connected to you as an individual, as a, as a human being because real life isn't edited. As much as I wish we could, we don't have someone who's editing everything we say and making it our perfect you or your perfect being. And so there's part of even the mistakes and part of the nuances or whatever else that make us human. So when you can show that to your audience, when you can show that to more people, some of those behind the scenes, it's gonna give them a special feeling of they're gonna feel more connected to you than let's say the other 330,000 people that are following for you in particular. I think that's a great question, one that I wanna keep revisiting because there's just so much to curating a YouTube community in particular and so much to curating communities online and they all have a lot of things that flow together. These questions have been awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to write them. Uh, it's fun to learn about the different questions that you have, where you're at in your life, and ways that we can provide value and hopefully continue to give back and build into this side. So in order to keep doing this, keeping your questions coming, telling your friends to post questions, helps us queue up the best questions and spend our time efficiently to give you the best insight we possibly can. Because I'm sure if you have a question about something, so do others, and that's kind of what, the way that we want this to scale. Keep your questions coming. You can ask your questions wherever this video is posted, or you can ask them on Instagram or on Twitter. Use the hashtag AskJoshHarkis so we can track them down a lot easier, and I look forward to talking soon.